figured, right, since me and Rick have been talking, and he's kind of dealing with a shoulder injury. Well, when I first started, um, I couldn't do any push-ups. And then, I, well, you know, I started to do some push-ups. I started to do the um, some of the bench presses and things like that. And I had a shoulder injury that I kind of almost forgot about when I was younger. Um, my brother and I, we, we got into, a, we got into a, a, a pretty good fight. And I turned around and I, and I, I did, but I kind of lost though too. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> when I turned around, when I turned around and I swung, he blocked and it, it he blocked my punch and it, it turned my arm around. Cause I was, I was, when I swung, I was like, not very, um, in a, in a comfortable position to swing. And, um, I was very uncomfortable. And, um, when I swung and my shoulder popped. Mm. my left shoulder popped and it's and it popped down and it it was a dislocation and um so well, i popped it back into place you know what i mean like i didn't think anything of it it hurt but i didn't think anything of it and then i just left it go i never did anything else to it and then um you know i, I was a demo guy for for 12 years jack hammering um above my head 65 pounds above my head 65 pounds above my head, bop, 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 bop. Yeah. bringing sledgehammers, uh, pushing wheelbarrows full of bricks and stuff like that. So my shoulders are tore, to, tore up. And uh, so when I started working out, you know, I, I, re- I re-aggravated that injury. Mm. And now, and now it, the arthritis had set in it. And um, so the doctor says it has a lot of arthritis in it. And, um, and that, you know, that I should be, mindful about lifting things above my head and things like that like i'm a i'm a tough tough guy when it comes to pain kind of and um so i don't really know if it's hurting me hurting me hurting me or if it's going to hurt me long term right when i'm doing it yeah so so um you know when it didn't, it just didn't feel like it was getting any better. And then it felt like it would get a little better. And then if I would go work out again and certain workouts would, would re-aggravate it and make it feel uncomfortable. And, uh, so that's about where I'm at right now with it. Um, eventually the doctor said, I don't know. He said, usually shoulders like mine, they, he sees about people in their mid sixties. And, and, uh, so, and that maybe at some time down the road, I need a shoulder replacement, but I'm not, I'm not looking at no shoulder replacement. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, I'm definitely not going to go that route if I don't have to. That's for not, that's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Now this is going to be good. And just for reference, right? How old are you, Rick? I'm 49. Okay. So 49. And the reason why I ask is because like you said about like, Hey, it's not hurting me or bothering me as much now, right? Like maybe I can fight through the pain, like mind over matter, but eventually, right. To where maybe you're like 69, you're still trying to be like active, still, you know, being in the weight room, right. That's 20 years down the road, right. There might be some issues if we're not taking care of it today, or at least being mindful of being precautious. Right. I I put myself in your shoes, Rick, because I'm like the same person where it's like, the mind over matter, like, oh, come on, man. Like we want the guns, right? We want to like be all ripped and in shape, but it's like, <laughs> you got to also look long-term. You don't risk it for the biscuit. Why? Right. The workouts are just the icing on the cake. There's plenty of ways to skin a cat. Sure. It's like, you know, you might not get the three shoulders or well, definition well, or anything like that well, because man. we're not training effectively, but at the end of the day, it doesn't matter, man. What matters the most is, hey, when we're in our 70s, we're not getting the surgery, right? Like, we're actually, like, fit. We're actually, like, active. Like, yeah. that's what it matters the most about, right? Not about how we look over there. It's about, like, hey, how do we feel? Like, you know, I, I don't want to be the guy that, and I don't think anybody else is, like, hey, you might have the six-pack guys. You might be ripped and in shape in your 60s or your 70s, but, like, you're brittle. Like, you're waking up and you're in aches and pains 24-7, like, that's not fun either. So no. I'm going to give you just some steps, right? In terms of like my, if I was in your shoes, what to do, how to have the right mindset, how to kind of overcome this. I want to bring some other people in terms of like, 
this coaching call as well, just to provide more value, just so you can see like, man, there's been plenty of other guys that have been through injuries, like Mark with his elbow, you know, like plenty of guys where it's like, you know, you know how to make these modifications, you know how to make these adjustments, where you are today compared to where you were before Heartletics, you know, um, tell us a little bit about that, because the big picture in all this is going to be the mindset. And I want to give credit where credit's due, because you've been working on your mindset so much but I know it probably has not always been that way. So do you mind sharing a, bit, a little bit about like what led you to Heartletics in the first place? And then maybe some of the results that you got from since starting to where we are today? Sure. Um, well, before Heartletics, I was, uh, I was about, I was close to 270 pounds and um, I wasn't very active. I would come home from work and I would, one of the, I was one of those dads that would come home from work and, you know, kick off work boots and, you know, sit down, grab a, grab a beer, grab something, you know, sit down, watch TV, watch baseball games, take a shower, eat, go to bed, you know, and, and I didn't really do too much. I gained weight. I tried, I tried some of the fad diets like keto and things like that, like um, LA weight loss, keto, um, a few other ones. And um, I lost a couple pounds here and there, but it was nothing, nothing crazy, you know, um, and then I met, I, I met you through a, uh, I was, I signed up for a discovery call and then I canceled it. And then, um, I kept, I kept, uh, the, the fat loss for men around for a while on my Facebook and it kept coming up, kept coming up. Jeremy Wade was sending things and, uh, I was like, Oh, well, you know, let me, let me give this thing a chance. And um, because I was feeling pretty bad, like my body was just breaking down. It was horrible. I felt like it was it was bad. It was bad. Like I was just I was bloated. My head hurt. My my body was just falling apart. And um, so I I talked to my wife about it, and uh, and she said, well, why don't you give Heartletics a try? Why don't you just see what they have to offer? You know. And um, so I did. And um, I rescheduled the discovery call with Coach Joe and uh, um, got hooked up with him and started getting at it um, and gradually worked on my mindset. And where my mindset is right now is, uh, you know, not giving up, finding a way to get it done. You know, I'm, I'm in it to win it now. I can't just give it up now. I came way too far for that. Um, and as I'm, I'm 30 pounds lighter, um, my body fat's down about 7% almost, uh, about 230, 34 pounds right now. Um, so yeah, it's, I mean, Heartletics has definitely been a blessing in the sky for me. And uh, I couldn't imagine myself without it. I love this, man. I love this. This is going to be so good because like, what I kind of heard from you, Rick, was you went from 270, right? And let's just say lazy, right? If we had to summarize that, you said coming home, right? Grabbing a beer, watching some sports, taking a shower, Groundhog's Day over and over again, so to speak, right? And then it wasn't until our man, Jeremy Wade, who does an excellent job inside that Facebook group, man. I love Jeremy's content, his pictures, videos, love it, man. It, it, it helped inspire you to take action, right? Um, and also like right. you felt it in your body. So you got signed up. You mentioned that you went from 270 down to about, you know, 234, 235. So losing about 35 pounds. And like the mindset now is not giving up. Right. So we need to continue to have that mindset because my next question is, OK, you're at two. Let's just say you're at 235 right now. Right. What's the goal? What's the next goal for you in terms of like weight or body fat percentage? Like what do you, what do you want to get down to? Um, I'd like to get down my my next my next. Um, substantial goal would be 200 pounds even. I love it. That's um, beautiful. And, um, and then my final goal after that would be probably about 185 to 190. I would love that. That would be awesome. Love that. So, and the reason why I firmly believe that you're going to get there is because of the mindset. Specifically, you said, I'm not giving up. That's my mindset, right? And so when it comes down to training, what do I always say, right? Does anybody know what I always say when it comes down to the workouts? 
They're just the icing on the cake. Sprinkles. They're just <laughs> exactly sprinkles, icing on the cake. Like that's it. <laughs> You know, if we had to focus on like a, a pyramid, right, and had three little prawns or three little sections to this, the foundation is always going to be right, like just the mindset, right? And why do I say the mindset first before nutrition? Because nutrition second, training's last. Well, the mindset—that's what's going to actually help you take the first step. If you don't believe, right, quote unquote, if you don't believe you can succeed, you're not going to even try, right? Like, what's the point? You know, you're going to go do something else. So maybe when we had our discovery call, and I know it was an aggressive discovery call. <laughs> like I one, actually, I actually, I didn't know if you want to share that, but like I actually, I'll never forget it, man. I, I was like, I was like, Rick, you're not a good fit for our coaching program, plain and simple. Like you're not I taking your health. I was like, hey, you're not taking your health serious. Your wife was the one that like you know showed you the photo of the you know uh, choose your hard. Hey, you can be lazy yeah. or you can be in shape. They're both hard. What? It's your choice, right? And then you send me over that message. You're like, all right, dude, like I'm ready to get signed up. And sure enough, here we are, 35 pounds lighter, right? And so it's yeah. like that mindset of not giving up, that mindset of, hey, I can do that. That's always going to be the foundation, okay? And I want everybody on this call to keep that in mind. No matter what life throws your way, right? If it's like, you know, challenges at work, injuries like Rick, if it's, hardships through anything, right? Like you need to have that mindset. You need to have that unshakable confidence. You need to have that belief system, right? That, hey, you can prevail. You can get through this, okay? Before anybody else can believe in you, you first need to believe in yourself. Henry Ford said it best. Whether you think you can or can't, you're right. So you might as well think you can, okay? Now, Rick, you sent me over a message in terms of like, okay, here's some exercises that I can do. And that's where I want to give credit where credit's due because most people, when they're dealing with, uh, let's just say an injury, right? They immediately throw in the towel and quit. They immediately say like, oh, well, hey, I'm injured. So I'm just going to be a couch potato, sit on the couch, grab a beer. They're not going to try. They're not going to make some modifications. You, right, know your body type. You know what injuries, right? You're assuming you know what exercises affect your injury, which is the, what are the ones I should stick with and what are the ones that you should stay away from, right? And that's obviously where you sent me over that message. Coach Mark did an amazing job making those recommendations and those edits for you within like what? Sure five minutes after I even told him, you know? So <laughs> it's just like, it's like you're getting that right there, the other 50%. But what you need to continue is just like, all right, how do you work on this thing upstairs? Okay. How do you have the right mindset? And so this is where, before we even talk about any kind of adjustments with the workouts and compensation, I want you to kind of focus on, all right, so where do you feel like right now, right? Maybe you can uh invest more time into or acquire more knowledge into whether it's the nutrition whether it's the mindset you know kind of despite the injury i think i can do a little of both i think i can do a little bit more mindset and nutrition um i mean i you know for the most part my nutrition you know I, it is dialed in and i know how to definitely do it um but i do struggle with it here and there with it you know like i i cheat for from here and there well I, I don't like saying cheating i like to say that um i partake sometimes in <laughs> you know little extra things but um for the most part i do know how to dial it in and um for the mindset part yeah like i just got to get better at um trying to learn the meditation side of things um i've been trying to work on that okay perfect man so let's let's dive into that because um, this is what I want to go over next, right? In terms of like, we already talked about with you specifically when it comes to making modifications and adjustments, Mark was on it, you know? For everybody else that's on, you know, this call right now, if you're dealing with anything, send me a message. Send, you know, uh, Mark a message, right? We're, we're here for you 24 seven and we truly mean that. Don't be the ones to say, oh, I got this knee injury or I got this back injury and then you just kind of give up. Because like, what do you typically do when that happens? Well, oh, I'm not going to work out more. You're not going to work out anymore. And then it typically falls into like bad eating habits. And then it typically falls into like the bad mindset, right? It's a snowball effect. So it's like, yeah. let us make those modifications, which we already did. But even if it's something so small, right? Somebody's on the piece of equipment at the gym. You guys are traveling, whatever the case may be. The bigger picture in all of this, when it comes to, you know, your health and fitness journey is that triangle once again, 
the mindset, the nutrition, the training, right? When it comes down to training, like, so you, for example, Rick, your shoulders, it's, it's, yeah, obviously you want them to be healthy and in shape and everything like that. But the reality is like you, and maybe correct me if I'm wrong, Rick, but like, I don't think you're going to be the guy that is going to be stepping on stage one day with board shorts and you're getting a bunch of guys judging you based on your physical appearance. Am I wrong or right? Um, you would probably be right about that. Okay. So don't worry so much about like, Oh, if I can't overhead press this, or if I can't do these X amount of lateral raises, because once again, like it's better to play it safe. Okay. Yeah. In terms of the mindset, I think that's amazing that you want to get more involved into meditation because for most people that's on this call right now, that is something that once they dialed it in, it became almost like life changing for them. It really helps them with dealing with less stress. It really helps them with dealing more like peace of mind, uh, helping them also stay more focused. Also seeing all like uh, the good things in their life, right? Rather than all like the negative things in their life. They're looking at the glass being half full rather than half empty, so to speak. So Rick, I'm gonna mute you just because I heard background music. Is that okay? Cool. So, but we're still going to go around the room and all that. So don't leave. Okay. <laughs> so in, in terms of the my, uh, meditation, I'll go over this and then we'll get some speakers to kind of like help you out, whether it's help you out with, you know, training, right. Modifications, adjustments, just like peace of mind. Maybe they want to share like their past experience, what they did when they were dealing with some injuries, whether some guys want to give some tips in terms of like, you did kind of mention a little bit about the nutrition. So maybe, you know, staying on top of that. And then also the mindset. So before we do that, though, like I like to say this when it comes to meditation, that is the hardest mindset technique that you can work on. OK, but it's the most beneficial one. So think about it in terms of like nutrition. OK, we'll, we'll say just like this. So um, I, I saw your message, too, Rick. OK, don't worry about that because you can always watch the replay on this. Cool. So in terms of like how meditation compares to the, the mindset or excuse me, how meditation com compares to like the nutrition aspect. For most guys, it's a struggle hitting their protein goal in the very beginning, right? They feel full, they feel bloated. They're like, oh man, this is so much food. But obviously, you know, hey, once your metabolism speeds up, it becomes like the easiest thing for you. And it helps you in the most sense when it comes to losing the body fat. So it's hard in the beginning, great ROI at the end of the day. Same thing when it comes to meditation for your mindset. It's a lot easier to, you know, uh, grab a journal, write, and start writing down the things you're grateful for, or writing down the things that, you know, you accomplish throughout the day through in terms of like self-reflection or even just like uh, visualizing your goals, right? Meditation is a little bit harder because it's hard to shut this thing upstairs, right? Your thoughts constantly going wild, right? So once you get that dialed in, it helps you out tremendously in all areas. Once again, peace of mind, dealing with less anxiety, less worry, less fear, um, uh, and, in in a lot of areas, meditation can really kind of help you out. Okay. So that's where it's like, you almost have to have grace for yourself and treat it as the long game, not the short game. Don't go into meditation as, oh, I'm going to expect this, or I want this to happen. Wrong mindset to have, right? When it comes down to meditation, it's like, Hey, how can we just like calm down our brain and calm down on just like, our, uh, our thinking habits, right? Where we're not worried about the future. We're not worried about the past. We're focused on being right here in the present. And what can help you out is just like focus on your breath. You know, there's so many different ways to meditate, whether that is a guided meditation on YouTube, whether that is just you putting in binary beats in your ears and closing your eyes and focusing on your breath, whether it's literally just like you just turning off any kind of outside noise distractions, lighting a candle and just watching the flame, right? Once again, you're just trying to focus and get yourself into that present moment. And the reality is like, you will have a lot of thoughts that go in and out of your head. Don't try to ignore them or put up a blinder. It doesn't work that way, right? Like, you know, obviously take awareness of them and just let them kind of surpass and just kind of get right back to that train of thought. Rick, I feel you, man. Um, a lot of what I'm hearing is uh, me. I got bad shoulders, bad elbow, bad back, bad knees, everything hurts pretty much every day. So totally understand what you're going through. And the first thing is you've already made adjustments. It's not what you can't do. It's what you can do, right? If I'm in the gym and something causes pain, it's done right then and there. Move on to something else that I can do, right? Um, so just keep doing that. Um, when I heard shoulders, the first thing, I don't know if you've got the video from Coach Joe about uh, stretching out your shoulders. 
if you've not seen that, but I recommend 100% doing that every day. It uh, may not cure your problems, but I tell you what, the, loosening them shoulders up and making them more mobile definitely has been a game changer for me over the last year. Um, <clears throat> as far as nutrition, I feel you. <laughs> I like to partake, as you say, too. <laughs> So that's that's been causing me some issues for the last few months. I'm kind of we'll call it a stall, but it's a self-imposed stall because I like to partake once in a while and it's it's catching me. So just try to dial back in on that, hit it as good as you can. Uh, for the mindset, two low-hanging fruit, man. Affirmations and gratitude. They are so easy. You just got to do it. And I tell you what, it, it just changes everything. Put your put your uh, affirmations up somewhere where you see it every day. Say the same thing over and over. Get in that positive headspace. Be grateful for what you can do, right? You can still walk. You can still nail your nutrition. You can still think positive, right? You can do it. So that's my recommendation for for your mindset. Uh, meditation's been – it's a struggle for me because it's fine in time, quiet time. It's not easy with uh, all the little kitties at home, so – um, still work on it every once in a while, but that's what I got for you, brother. I love that. I love that. And I was just thinking about this too, Rick, and this might be with a, a lot of guys too. They feel like if they can't work out, like let's say you can't even make it to the gym, right? They feel like they're going to sabotage all their results. They feel like, oh man, it's been a week of like not lifting weights. Like I'm going to lose all my muscle. I'm going to lose all my hard work, right? Like just so you know, like it does not work that way in the body at all right? Like it takes a very long time for you to actually lose muscle. And like, if you're eating plenty of protein, if you're, you know, at least training that muscle group, you know, bare minimum once a week, like you're never going to lose that muscle. Okay. So it's like peace of mind in that area too. Like you might, and I think I mentioned this when I sent you over that voice memo, it's like, you might lose some glycogen, right? Where it's like, Hey, that gets stored in the muscle. So it's like, you lose the glycogen, but it's not like you're actually losing the muscle. Okay. Another thing that I want you to think about too, uh, and it kind of goes with what Jason said, and I really hope this helps out anybody that's dealing with, you know, whether it's an injury or just some, some hardships in their life. Um, I heard this on one of those YouTube shorts where it said your problems, because I really like what Jason said about, you know, hey, you can still walk, you can still do this, you know, think about the things you can do. So this video that I heard was if you take your problems, like everything that you're struggling with right now in your life, and if you threw them in a pile and everybody else threw all their problems in a pile as well you would be the first person to grab your troubles and grab your hardships and take it back ASAP, right? Because then you can start to realize here that like, man, way people, you know, a lot of people have it way worse. You know, uh, Christine Kane, I think she says a, a quote where it's like, um, sometimes when you think that you've been buried, you've actually been planted. So it's like, maybe with you, with your shoulder injury, it's a blessing disguise because maybe you can focus on the nutrition or maybe you can focus on the mindset and the meditation to where once again, like that, amplifies you and helps you out even more so that way when the shoulder does heal up which it will it's going to compensate and just once again help you become a better version of yourself not just physically but mentally as well i was going to say along those lines um you're going to learn right that you know even like after like for example i had issues with my shoulder uh with my um elbow and, uh, you know, so during the time when the elbow was flaring up, you know, I would do things like either use lighter weight, you know, on certain exercises or, you know, skip certain exercises. And then what you're going to find is, you know, after you do recover, right, you don't want to re, you know, aggravate whatever's bothering you. I've just learned that certain exercises, like coach always says there's more than one way to skin a cat. So there are certain exercises that work the same muscle but some of them will bother you know, and set off my elbow and some won't. So I mm -hmm. will switch up like, um, you know, instead of I, like, I love the, um, the bicep burnout, right? It's, it's one of the ones I gave you on your new workouts, but for me that I don't know what it is, something about that particular way of doing bicep curls does not sit well with my, um, elbow. It, you know, it definitely is one of the things that sets that off. So I'll replace that with a bunch of, uh, you know, uh, cable bar bicep curls because I can still work the bicep and that for some reason doesn't cause the pain the same way that the other motion does. You'll find what works for you, what doesn't work for you. The thing is there's always more than one way to skin a cat. No one exercise is the be all and end all. 
Um, like you mentioned, you know, uh, squats, you know, the, uh, the box. By the way, I, I already made those adjustments for you. There's plenty of other ways to work those muscles, you know, so, so um, don't feel like you're missing out if there's a certain exercise that is going to, you know, cause an exacerbation of whatever's bothering you. There's so many ways to uh, you know, do that. And then as far as the mindset, Oh, when you were well, talking about meditation, because I'll always push meditation if someone's interested in it, because I've always just found it, you know, once I got into it to be super helpful. Um, but I think the best way to start out uh, is short guided meditations on YouTube. Um, and what I found is the easiest thing to do is go on YouTube and just put meditation for and then what it is that you want to, you know, focus on because they're all out there on YouTube. So, you know, meditation for calm, meditation for positive minds, or whatever it is you're you're looking to accomplish. And look for the, you know, the shorter ones to start out because you have to build up that attention span. And that's always a great way to get going in that area. Yeah, yeah. Bill, I'm gonna come to you next. Uh, Mark said a lot of really good things, three of them specifically, right? That I just want to reiterate. So the first one is like, use lightweights. Like there's the, like, I get it right. The name of the game is progressive overload, but when it comes to like dealing with the injury and trying to rehab that play it safe, you know, like use lightweights. There's nothing wrong with that at all. Just do more reps. You know, like you like, remember when it comes to progressive overload, yes, you can lift heavier, but at the same time you can fatigue that muscle by playing it safe. Right. And just doing more reps. That's all it, it's time under tension. Okay. Um, the second thing that Mark said was, you know, find out what works for you because Mark used the point about like doing the biceps with like the bicep burnout hurts his elbow, but he was able to do the bicep, you know, cable curls and it doesn't hurt his elbow. So what does that mean? Well, with you working out at Planet Fitness, Rick, you know, after obviously you give your time to kind of like heal yourself with the, the shoulder a little bit, play around with, maybe it's like uh, one, if you were doing anything overhead press, right? Like play around with, there's the machines, there's the dumbbells, right? Like, Focus on maybe one that it's like, you know, who knows, maybe it might be the machines with lightweights where, um, and I think the plan of fitness one is one where you're like holding it like this rather than holding it like this. So maybe just that grip position, you know, effectively works your, your shoulder without hurting it. Or once again, maybe it's with the dumbbells and you're losing just lighter weights. Or once again, you're not even using or doing any kind of overhead pressing. Maybe it's front raises. Maybe it's lateral raises. Maybe it's upright rows. You know, don't think you need to just always do an, you know, overhead, um, you know, press in order to work the, the shoulder, you know, you can skin a cat multiple ways. And the last thing that Mark said about the guided meditation is, yeah, like go on YouTube, you can find any one, but specifically do, do a short one, you know, like you, you can find ones that's like five minutes, eight minutes, 10 minutes, stick within those, right. Especially if you're someone that's not used to, you know, I'll put it in a sense of like health and fitness, right. If let's say you never worked out before, I wouldn't recommend going to the gym and doing like a two hour long workout, right? Like that's not going to be fun because the next day you're going to be all beat up. You're going to be all, you know, destroyed, you know, don't think, you know, oh, the more that I do, the better results I'm going to get. No, sometimes it's less than more, right? Because that way we can show up and be more consistent. I'd rather you focus on like a five or seven or eight minute meditation, one that resonates with you, whether it's just like peace of mind or something with your goals or gratitude, something like that. And you do that every single day, right? Five minutes, right? Rather than focusing on like a 30 minute, you know, meditation that, you know, it's like at the end of it, you're like, what just happened? I fell asleep. That based on, on what you're looking for that day, you should have something sort of in your tool belt that you can use for a meditation. And none of them are very long, right? Like I think the longest one that I've ever stayed awake during um, was probably 18, 19 minutes. Right. I have an I have an hour long one in my thing that I've never made it halfway through. Right. Um, another thing about the meditation is I, I know that since you've started, you've gotten you've gotten better at your protein, you've gotten better at your neat, you've gotten better at your fluid intake, you've gotten better at your workouts, regardless of, of your injury now. Um you will not get better at meditation that fast. Yeah. So just be be prepared to to struggle initially with your meditations. Like your mind is going to focus, or it's gonna it's gonna lose focus. Um, the way it was explained to me, I think it might have been Joe who said this to me. Um, 
when I was complaining about meditation not not being beneficial and kept thinking about all these other things that, well, I've had 58 years of shit running around my head. I can't just turn it all off in one day, right? Um, so just be prepared to sort of recognize that the the gains in your ability to meditate are going to be much slower and much more subtle than the gains that you've made with any other part of the program. Rick, with that being said too, and for everybody, right, that's trying to get into meditation, Bill, you hit the nail on the head, man. Like you will not progress at it because you like in your head, you have so much going on throughout so many years. It's hard to quiet that mind. It's used to rambling on, especially it's like, um, if you're in a, a situation, right, or you grew up in a situation where there was a lot of uncertainty or fear or, you know, scarcity, whatever the case may be, it's hard to kind of collect your thoughts and get into the present moment. It takes time. But Bill, would you say that like since meditating, uh, like has it been beneficial for you? It, <coughs> excuse me, it, um, it helped me a lot just in dealing with, uh, I mean, you know, for those who, who have heard my story before, right. Um, as you know, I've never been one that's been supremely sort of confident in myself. Um, and some of the, some of the more motivational ones, um, have had me like repeating, you know, believing, 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 and sooner or later you stop hearing it and you really start believing it. Right. Um, so from that aspect, for sure, um, they've been beneficial. Some of the other visualization ones, I've never, I've never visualized anything before like that or done visualization exercises. Um, so some of those have been pretty cool just to try a, a new skill. Yeah. Yeah. And Rick had a bounce, uh, but I saw in the chat that he's going to be watching this on the replay. So Rick, when you are watching this and for everybody else that is watching this or going to be watching this, uh, when you are on YouTube and trying to find like a good meditation, keep in mind, like there's millions of them, kind of like a Mark said, you can find different topics, but also like different voices too. Like there might be like a female voice that resonates with you. There might be a guy's voice that resonates with you. Just like, like it, it's kind of like so many different exercises to do to work a muscle. It's the same thing with so many different tools to work your mental muscle when it comes down to meditation. Does anybody else want uh, to say anything about, you know, meditating or any other tips for Rick or anybody else that's dealing with any kind of like injuries or, you know, making any kind of modifications? Uh, I'll just share the, uh, a quick technique that I found uh, works really well for calming uh, the mind before meditation is doing a bit of yoga before mm. you meditate. That really helps with, you know, calming the mind and just, you know, kind of transitioning really easy into a meditation. Do you have any like specific like yoga poses or exercises when it comes to yoga that you recommend doing? Uh, honestly, whatever feels best in the moment, because I'll switch it up. You know, yeah. uh, basically, wherever you're tense is the best way to, you know, do movements that are going to release that tension. And that helps move you into uh, the meditative state really easily. Uh, it's probably a question for that's Danny interesting man i'm uh but... i'm gonna try that out actually i've never done that before i never even heard of that so i'm I'm gonna try that out because i i dabble in yoga here and there and i can see how you know at the end of the if you ever took a yoga class before they typically do that meditation vanasana i think it is yeah uh, where it's like you just kind of calm down so that's a great tip there mike um and then gabe i saw you put your hand up brother uh, for once again, you know, Rick watching this replay or anybody else that's on this call right now watching it, you know, on either YouTube or iTunes or Spotify, you know, what are some tips, man? I'm, I'm sure you got some, some fire to drop with the mindset. Oh man. <clears throat> so back last year I had to do a hernia repair. So that was yeah, the yeah. first question I asked is that, oh my God, I worked so hard to get to where I'm at right now. Am I going to lose my gains? Right. And as a matter of fact, that's a big no obviously within parameters, right? And as a matter of fact, Coach Mark uh, made it, did a little uh, uh, study on about when you start doing weightlifting and training and the, your muscle memory has better memory in shorter time to recovery back to its normal state than it would if you were starting from scratch. So you're actually gonna get back to where you're supposed to be so much faster. And I forgot, he gave us a bunch of fancy numbers in science, which is amazing. 
Uh, so you're actually going to go back to your normal, back to where you were if you lost anything at all, uh, relatively faster than you uh, originally grinded to that point. That's number one. Number two, uh, when I had my injury, um, you know, that was my worry, you know, but then, like you said, what can I do? Um, and I think it's going back down to the basics, like you guys saying, working on your mindset, working on nutrition, getting your well, you know, working on the stuff that you weren't having time to work on, uh, taking that extra time that you have now and, and using that to your ability. Um, and I'll be honest with you, I took, uh, I think it was six to eight weeks that I could not lift anything heavier than a water, water jug gallon. So as a matter of fact, I couldn't even pick up my gallon jug. I had to get half gallon uh, cup, you know, shakers so I could drink my water, but they didn't stop me from drinking my water. Uh, I just did it in half gallon measurements. So, um, so I wasn't able to lift at all for, for that almost two months. And then what I did is just, I walked and stayed active and didn't take that as like, oh, now I'm just gonna, like you were saying, slouch in the couch and just be a couch potato. You know, I, I walked around, I did what I could. I didn't lift anything. I just did a lot of walking and just movement really. You know, okay, so I couldn't do my push-ups like I wanted to. Uh, so I did just body squats, right? I did body squats. Uh, and, and that's it, because I'm not really putting any tension on my body, uh, just movement. It, it's just, that was really the key. And then I set a timer on my phone or in a watch thing, right? You could, if you stop moving for more than a certain amount of time, it'll tell you, like, get up and move. Yeah. And I make sure I get up and move. As a matter of fact, I just got over an injury recently. I don't know if you guys can see it. I have a, a ripped tenant on my hand. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and it was getting real bad. I took a cortisone shot just this past weekend, and uh, I couldn't do push-ups. I could not put my hand flat on the ground, uh, but for, like flat was no good. I can grab things and I, and I didn't have as much strength, but I just, it wasn't a big deal. I just couldn't do push ups. So I'm like, all right, but you know, do something else. So, you know, it, 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 we're, we're limited to ourselves and there's more than one way to slice a cat and you're not going to lose any of your gains. Uh, just keep going, use the extra time you have for other things that are going to better you. Um, and lastly, but not least, Okay, so you haven't been in the gym, you haven't worked out, you haven't done a push up in over like, you know, two months. Don't try to go back to those same weights. <laughs> yeah, gonna, yeah. Dude, that's Gabe, gonna suck. I'm, I'm really happy you said that, man. Please elaborate more because, like, oh, yeah, I will. We, I, we, we didn't touch base on that, man. And I, <laughs> yeah, we forgot about it. So please talk about that more because that's very, very key. Yeah. So, okay, so it's been quite some time. You had your injury, you feeling good, right? You've been doing a little bit more at a time. I like, I remember getting my release from my doctor saying, you're good to go. Everything looks good. Uh, and you know, you can get back to your normal living. Awesome. That same day I was at the gym. Yeah. So I started trying to lift and I damn near hurt myself because I was trying to put back the weights on the same amounts that I was before. And, uh, yeah, no, that didn't work out well. And I, you can <laughs> definitely hurt yourself. Uh, you know, obviously I warmed up and whatnot and get myself ready, but yeah, I, I forgot what it was. I don't know where if it was, I think it was a single handed rolls and the roll, the, the roll when you're rolling and one handed rolls. Yeah. yeah I, 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 I was poor and I felt something pop and I was like, yeah, that was really bad. I went too heavy there. Um, so start light and work your way back up there. I would say that that advice about doing more reps than do heavy is probably the best entry. So that way you can get those glycogens back into the muscle and that's going to help build those suckers back up.